Okay. Okay, I'd like to uh, welcome you to uh, the first event at SciCon, our workshop. Oh. Actually, our first event today. Technically, that would be a free kind of event. So, uh, anyway, uh, workshop on skeptical activism. I can't think of better people to do this workshop than Mark Edward and Susan Gervick. A uh, little introduction. <coughs> made them send me bios, so I'm going to read them. Is it off of Wikipedia? I'll sit down. I don't trust Wikipedia. <laughs> Mark Edward is a professional mentalist who specializes in magic of the mind. He has spent over 35 years in world-class venues, including Psycon, from high-end nightclubs and theaters to hundreds of private party corporate events. He travels internationally as a skeptical activist, using his skills as a mentalist to teach and promote critical thinking. Mark Edward. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Susan Gerbic, affectionately called the Wikipediatrician. Mm -hmm. uh, Susan is a co-founder of the Monterey County Skeptics and a self-proclaimed skeptical junkie. She's also founder of the Gorilla Skepticism on Wikipedia, uh, Gorilla Skeptical Wikipedia Project. And she's a frequent contributor to Skeptical Inquirer and Skepticality Podcast. She is the winner of the CSI In the Trenches Award from 2012, uh, the James Randi Award for Skepticism in the Public Interest 2013. Yeah, good run there, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> she, became, she became a scientific and technical consultant for CSI in 2015 and a CSI fellow in 2017. She was awarded the James Randi Prize, the James Randi Prize for 2017 and in 2018. Susan founded and manages About Time, a nonprofit organization focusing on scientific skepticism and activism. So, for the Skeptical Activism Workshop, I'm going to turn it over to Mark and Susan. Thank you. Hi. Thank you, everybody. Uh, I'd like to, uh, first of all, thank Barry for having us. Uh, we are, can we turn the screen off? I always feel like I'm in the, in the spotlight when this is on. Oh, well, I'll stand here then. Uh, not that I don't mind being in the spotlight, but. So, yes, my name. Technology. I'm afraid I'm going to knock everything out, you know. We have to reboot. That's perfect. All right. So, thank you. See, science. It's all about science, okay? And light. Um, so, my name is Mark Edward, and I am a thought reader. And I know what you're thinking. <laughs> I know what you're thinking. I know what that man in the back row is thinking right now. I know what some people over here are thinking right now. It's what I do. But I can't just point somebody out and single them out and say, this is what you're thinking. That would be really embarrassing for me, okay? But if we work together as a team, amazing things can and will happen. I almost guarantee it. So I'm going to break from the tradition of my standard act to talk about what we do as activists, which is quite a bit different. Uh, it's it's with, a, with a much more powerful uh, set of <coughs> skills behind it. So I'd like to try something right off the bat that is usually done later on in a show, okay? Uh, a lot of people say, oh, there's stooges in the audience, which I, I'm happy to do. I have no objection to that. <laughs> but what we're going to talk about today are hot reads and cold reads. Most of you, we're assuming, know, know what a cold reading is. Raise your hand if you do not know. <laughs> you almost raised your hand. Okay, a cold reading is just a set of, set of generalities, which is directed towards a person. You watch and learn to understand body language. You watch and learn what kind of shoes somebody's wearing, jewelry, hairstyle. You're profiling. I know that's kind of a dirty word, but a good psychic is like a good shoe salesman. Before
set foot into the shoe department, a good shoe salesman already knows how much money you're going to spend. It's an automatic response. So cold reading is filling in the gaps and getting people to believe that you know all about them when you know absolutely nothing about them. Like uh, this gentleman right here. We never met before, right, sir? I get about you a very restless disposition. You like to travel? You don't like to travel? But did you travel a lot and that's why you're kind of restless now? You traveled in your past? No. This is why I stay with hot readers. <laughs> and also, all of this predispos the predisposition is that you are not skeptics, okay? The general, general person who pays to go to see a medium is going to make a connection for me. Thanks, sir. <laughs> They're going to make a connection because they don't want the psychic to fail. They, they've invested already emotionally and they paid for a ticket, but we won't go into that. So let's just cut to a hot reading. So I set something up before the show. Okay? And this is, in, technically in the mentalism uh, world, this is called pre-show. Okay? And it has now been adopted by every single medium that you see on television or most of the ones in the news. I set something up with this lady right here, whose name is, your name is Rebecca. That is correct. See? <laughs> I mean, I'm just starting with the really low bar stuff, okay? So, Rebecca, would you mind joining me on stage? Give her a round of applause. So, Rebecca has kindly uh, uh, given me the opportunity to work with her mind. And she has a very open mind. She's, uh, she's open to new ideas and new things, so I thought she'd be perfect for this. What we did... <clears throat> is I took my sketch pad out into the audience, or out into the front, and I opened it up, and I took a piece of paper, and I put it on the front of the sketch pad right here, and I went down the hall here. She held this up in front of her, and I asked her to think of one geometric shape inside of another, or an organic shape, or whatever shape came to her mind. And this is very important. I didn't, like, go through a pack of design cards and say, pick one. You made it up in your mind, right? Yes. She yes. made it up purely in her mind, and you went directly to it, didn't you? Yes. Yeah, so she has very clear thinking, this will help in what I'm going to do, okay? So she drew that, and I told her I was about 50 feet away, right? Mm -hmm. My back was turned. She was told to hold this up, take the pen, go straight on. Don't do it like this, because a lot of people think I'm looking at the top of the pen, which is a method, but I don't do that method. I want it straight on, I want everything masked as far away as possible. Is there any way I can know what you drew? No, he was completely turned away. And okay, yeah. all right, so now the fun part. So, what we do is you, and we, uh, by the way, I forgot, she took the piece of paper, folded it into quarters, while she was still 50 feet away from me, put it in her pocket or her purse, and you have it with you now? Mm -hmm. You're holding on to it? Yeah, it's in my bag. Okay, just go, go over and grab it. And just to make sure, Rebecca, you didn't mention that to anybody. You didn't say, I drew this, I drew a flower, I drew nobody. No. So it's in your mind. And he wanted, I was going to tell him, and he said, no, no I don't want to absolutely. <laughs> because then I might be reading his mind. Right. So. <laughs> he's got all sorts of other stuff going on. So. So, all right, so here's what we're going to do. I'm going to ask you to unfold that piece of paper and hold the, the, the design part towards yourself like this and your hand over it so no one can see what it is. I'll turn it away. And since you're wearing black, you can just rub that ink right into your closet. <laughs> okay. All right, now turn back to back like this, okay? And, and move back towards me. Go ahead. Don't worry. Oh, yes. <laughs> this is so important in the work I do. <laughs> Human contact. Okay, are you focusing on it right now? Yes. Okay, don't change your mind now because I am going to try and... This is really kind of a weird one. That would be me. <laughs> yeah. But well, we get them now on a can. What month were you born? What month? Yeah. August. Around the 19th? 
No. No. <laughs> that, was, that sounded pretty, pretty conclusive. <laughs> I, I, okay, I'm going to go with what I've got right now. Turn slowly around like this towards the audience, and now you're going to unfold your piece of paper. I will not. Uh, oh, actually, what we're going to do is on the count of three, we will both show. I will show what I picked up directly from her mind using telepathy, oh. and she will turn hers around using what is called creativity. Are you looking on the count of three? One, two, three. Wow. wow. Oh, is that a bicycle? <laughs> oh, see, you got a little fancy there. <laughs> well, I got one of the wheels. Are you going to give it to me? Yeah. yeah. Try and keep it simple. But that's okay. You're all psychic now. <laughs> yes, Domini, Domini, Domini. You're all psychic now. No, not really. No. So, so that is called pre-show. Now, it's fun. We got a laugh, right? Mm -hmm. It's a, it's a mystery. It's a little bit of wonderment. Uh, but then, what seems to happen in our time is things get a little bit dicey. Like, uh, if I just. Because, you know, it opens, I'm opening the doors of perception. I'm suggesting the possibility of mind-to-mind -mind connection. You know, picking up so, this gentleman here, your name is, sir? Tom. Tom, uh, would you mind standing up for a second? You know that already. <clears throat> no, I did not know that. Tom, um, I'm getting that you're thinking, you've been thinking about a number. Is that true? And, and, and since we're in Las Vegas, I'm getting that you were thinking about a playing card. Maybe it was a card you needed or something. Is that right? It's been playing on your mind, more or less. You can see it really clearly. Is it a black card? It is? OK, so we know it's not a red card. Because I'm seeing the four of spades. Is that the card you're thinking about? Thank you. Give him a round of applause for that. It's your lucky card, don't forget it. So then I could go down amongst the audience and I could say, uh, uh, definitely travel for you. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Am I right? Yeah. Yeah. And I'm picking up some other vibes. This gentleman here, you're thinking about money right now, aren't you? No? <laughs> okay. Everybody's thinking about money. Anyway, the point is, a, 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 good, a good psychic entertainer uh, my point is, when does psychic entertainment <coughs> stop being entertainment and it becomes something else? And that's when I say, I see your dead grandmother or your murdered child standing behind you. Okay? And he wants you to know that he acknowledges that you're here. And uh, if you want to talk more about it, talk to the lady in the back and we'll set up a private reading. That's where we draw the line. That is where it is no longer entertainment. It becomes manipulation, and it becomes the thing that Susan and I hate more than anything. And that's why we call the people who do this and who are making millions of dollars, don't kid yourself, grief vampires. We're taking entertainment to a level which is no longer fun. I don't think it's fun when a woman breaks down in tears because she misses her son who was shot in the head in a gang-style shooting. I don't get that. I don't think anybody here gets that or thinks of it as entertainment. And I think that it is blatant criminality of the worst kind. Because you are getting a hook in somebody, and these guys do not let go until someone comes along and can separate them. It's almost like a cult experience with some people. They become psychic junkies. And uh, do I need to tell you we are in the midst of the golden age of the con right now. <laughs> I've mentioned this for two years now. But, I mean, it's gotten to the point now where people are really tired of being lied to. I can't do much about the higher levels of uh, dishonesty because I'd be taken out, basically. So all I can do is start at the bottom feeders. And these are the bottom feeders who we're going to talk about. And they use pre-show. And pre-show is exactly what I did. I'm not going to tell you. I mean, I give, I've given you a really good example of it. So I'm not going to tell you everything I would do. Uh, the last, Because in the last lecture I did, we did a whole hot read thing. Where, how many people were at last year's? 
So what we did is, what we're going to show you, we did in the New York Times sting that we worked on, but we did it with the audience at SciCon, and it was pretty effective, but I didn't want to repeat the same thing. So t today we're going to kind of add another layer on, which is how successful we've been in what we've done and how we've actually seen it change people's lives. So those of you who say, ah, you're going after psychics, that's never going to change. And it hasn't in thousands of years. But if we save one person's life or we change a couple people's lives who can spread the word, then we've done our work. And that's all we can do. So uh, that's why I'm using my skills as a performer or magician to do something other than say, ha ha, I fooled you. Because that's not that fun anymore. It's ha ha, we fooled you on a huge scale. So this is, we've got two hours, don't we? Do I have time for one more? <laughs> Any questions so far? Good. Oh, yes. Why is it meaning called COM? CSI COM? It's a big COM, right? Uh, I think it's appropriate <laughs> because it's SciCon. And, and in the 70s, PSI meant anything that was paranormal or psych psychic. So, in a way, it kind of fits it's PSYCON. And it's, we're, we're going we're gonna to con you in the right direction, hopefully. <laughs> So you'll have to ask Barry about that. <laughs> I am just a tool of this, of this, uh, this great establishment. So now I'm going to bring on... You said you were doing else. I was? Tell, tell them the story about the kid yesterday. No. You have to. <laughs> <sighs> but how am I going to explain it? See, certain things happen when you're a mentalist. Again, when you suggest that you're opening this door of perception, and despite the fact that I try to set up a framework which is under my control as a performer, once in a while something happens, an anomalous experience that jumps outside of the framework and where it becomes like, wow. Now, I can explain that story to you, but I can't explain why it happened. But you'll see some kids if you're here for the weekend. Susan has been working on this project where there's science schools in the area and we're going to bring these kids in here and they're going to experience PSYCON for the first time. We want to plant the seeds, we want to get kids while they're young, and these kids are excited, and we went to their school yesterday and did a couple demonstrations of what I do, and they were fantastic, you know. But again, at one point, this anomalous experience happened. And here I am, the expert, they're like, How, how'd you do that? And I'm like, uh, odds, you know? <laughs> Uh, statistics, coincidence, all those words that are kind of flimsy when you're uh, 17 years old had to be used. But the point was that they understood that that doesn't happen all the time. And in my seance work, I've certainly seen and experienced things that I could not explain. But after words, I sat down and I kind of uh, back-engineered what happened. And I was able to uh, give myself a, a, an explanation that, that kept, me, kept me sane, you know, while I was doing these things. <coughs> Excuse me. Because people who see this experience of seance, they don't know what to expect. So they're going all over the map, and there's a lot of imagination that is used, and you suggest, you're using hypnotic suggestion techniques, and... Uh, uh, NLP and all sorts of these wooish things that we have all as skeptics learned to uh, be very critical of and yet the greater mass of people who are out there have no idea about how easy it is to not only be fooled but to fool yourself into thinking that what what you're seeing is is a real experience so um, I didn't really I didn't really prepare to talk about yesterday but I, I want to tell everybody here who's going to be here tomorrow, when you see one of these kids, you know, if you can take some time to talk to them, please do, they because, have yeah, they're going to have a sticker that says STEM on it. Bright red. Bright red. And uh, <coughs> if you have a few moments to talk to them, to encourage them, they are going to be the leaders, we hope, in the future. Okay, they're going to be the ones like Randy is today. So it's, it's a start, and I think that uh, we, we need more of the youth people to come into this because 
they want to understand and they're already some of these kids were with levels way ahead of us and we had to just like stop and think well this is the future we need to listen to them so I'm not gonna preach too much about about that so the, the bottom line is we're gonna talk about how we have been successful as activists because Susan and I have been going to these conferences for 10 years Susan's probably been going for 20 years 10 and we just got to this point where we were like I don't want to listen to people talk stand up in front of people and talk here I am, you know. There's really no other way to do it unless we get some media exposure, okay? And the bottom line is when we get to the end of this, that is what we are searching for, is we are searching for a way to reach, and this has always been my goal as a mentalist, a way to reach the greatest amount of people, period, okay? And I, I, my book, Psychic Blues, for those who, it's in the bookstore, is about my travels through the, where I infiltrated the psychic market. Mm -hmm. uh, my goal has always been to be in the airport and I look over at Hudson News and there's a huge stack of these. It's never gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> because people don't want the truth. They'd rather read uh, Deepak Chopra or something like that. That's, that's the world we live in. So we have to do the best we can with the resources that we are able to engender. But the bottom line is the media is hungry for the truth. The, the, the wind is changing. And uh, we need to take full advantage of that while we can because it could get worse. I don't see how because if we, don't we say every day, can it get any worse? And it gets worse. And worse. So this is square one for everybody who hasn't already thought about this. Square one is, yes, you can do something. And we're going to show you ways that you can do something where you don't even have to leave your house. You know, for me, I grew up in the 60s. I got out in the streets. I, I was out there as a performance artist as well as an a angry, angry youth. So that's my style. Susan's style is totally different. She sits at home with her cat on her keyboard <laughs> most of the time. And she does what she does. And she's incredibly effective at what she does. So if you have the will, there is a way, and we're gonna hopefully pass on some methods for you to become involved so that you can feel like you're actually doing something and seeing some results. Because we see results, and boy, it's phenomenal when you, when you see, uh, when you change somebody's life and they realize that they realize how the magic trick works. Because it's usually far simpler than what people imagine. The older we get, the more we complicate things. And the younger kids, they just see right through it. So, I don't know, we learn from the youth, the youth learns from us. Yes, sir? Do you have to reveal the magic behind what you do in order to get people to become skeptical of psychic uh, effects? No, I don't think so because I think it depends on the venue. Like a venue like this, you don't need me to reveal my secrets, do you? Yes. <laughs> no, because the thing is, I believe we have illusion and we have disillusion. Which do you prefer, sir? It depends. Right. Right. It depends on the venue. So I would rather have you go away with a little bit of wonderment than than disillusion and like, oh, that was that's all he did. You won't remember it. You just throw it away. Most people do anyway. But if I leave you with a little bit of wonderment and you are thinking about it, it will carry on. So it depends on the venue. I teach magic. I taught magic for 10 years. But those people are paying specifically to learn specific things. See? So I don't like to give away secrets. But once, once we're, we are finished with this presentation, I think you'll have a pretty good idea what what we did and how we did it, okay? I'll give you, I'll give you an example real quick. God, I love this one, so why not, you know? <clears throat> this is one I learned from my, one of my early magic teachers, Jules Lanier. He would say to somebody like this lady here, would you And your name is? Sharon. That is correct, Sharon. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Sharon, how are you? I'm fine. How are you? Good. Doing well. So we never met before. You have no idea who I am or what I'm doing, right? Yeah. Perfect. All right. Sharon, here's what I want you to do. I want you to concentrate on your telephone number. Okay, here we go. Don't forget the area code. Very important. Your pin drop in here. All right. So what I'd like you to do is go ahead and nice and nice, nice loud voice. Go ahead and tell everybody what I wrote right here. My telephone number. There's a million of these. <laughs> There's a million of these, and, and if they're done, there's a million of these, and, and if they're done in the proper modus, if you, yeah. if you play it up, you have a turban on or something, it's all in the presentation, okay? So, those are the sort of things, I love all this stuff, I love all the psychic craziness, all the fraud, all the, but I love the artifice of it, like that. I don't love what it does to people and how people become dependent on it and I do not like the manipulation emotionally, okay? But the trickery of it is fantastic. It's what were cunning men in the medieval times. It's what cunning men did. That's where the word cunning comes from, okay? It's, it's to take advantage of the moment like Uri Geller, you know, many skeptics can't stand him, and the, the main one who's here in the hotel really can't stand him. But to me, he's one of the great performers. But he doesn't say he's a performer. He says he's the real thing. That's where you kind of cross the line. But, but Geller, to me, if you've ever seen... How many people have ever seen Geller work a room? Pretty amazing, wasn't it? He's not saying. Yeah. You're in a room of skeptics. I understand. Yeah, I mean, the, the guy is just <coughs> incredible. And he uses these sorts of things, but he masks them by, by being this, having this incredible charisma, which you can't help but kind of slide into and appreciate on that level of personality. But once again, what he does when he's outside of that room is a whole other thing. So let's see if I can think of another one here, as long as I'm on a roll here. This is a fun one, too. An onion roll? A what? An onion roll or a Kaiser roll? No, that wasn't the one I was going to use. Oh, we can try this one. Let's try this one. No, wait a second. Um, this lady right here. Is there any way in the world I could know your grandmother's maiden name? Probably not. No, right? Correct. See how easy it is to get this? I'm, I'm, really, I'm really kind of grabbing at straws here. But the point is, nowadays, that, see that used to be used by mentalists 10 or 20 years ago. Nowadays, I can find out what her grandmother's right, name right, is. Yeah, right. Especially if she's in my show, she's used her credit card to pay for the seat, I know what seat she's in. I have her name, I have a program on my computer home called, what is it called? Intellis. Intellis, or any of the credit checking systems go in there. It costs money, but if you have enough money and enough time, <laughs> I could find out her first, the name of her first grade teacher. She might not even remember it, but the point is, People say to Susan and I all the time, and we love to hear this, no matter where we go, they say there's no way in the world a psychic could have known that. And we say, oh, yes, there is. There's very little that is not out there. And we willingly put it out there every day if you're on the computer. So with that, I'm going to lead into Susan's talk. We'll have lots of time for questions later. Um, are you ready? Sure. So Susan is well known throughout the world for her Wikipedia project. 
<clears throat> and that's usually what we get called upon to talk about. We're not going to go too deeply into that because we want to stay with this grief vampire thing, okay? So without any further ado, ladies and gentlemen, the fabulous Susan Gerbic. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Okay. Panta, thank you, Mark. That was fun. I like to just let him go. <laughs> he's got, he, he, he's very entertaining Thanks. all the time. All right. <coughs> so we do have a table right on the other side of this wall right here that I will be sitting at for the next few days. And you can come and ask me all the questions you possibly want, especially about our Wikipedia project, which is extremely successful. <coughs> and I will barely be talking about it today. Um, but I will, I will gladly sit and talk to you for hours about it if you want. All right. So, mm -mm. how many people here were in the lecture that Mark and I did last year at SciCon that was on the um, girl, event, uh, girl of skepticism and some of the psychic uh, activism we did? No. Couple? Okay. So this lecture is going to be kind of like a recap of what happened, not what happened, but moving on from there. And I do have a website set up. It's called abouttimeproject.org. And you will see um, it at the very last slide, and you'll be able to take a picture of it. And when you go to that slide, and you, I mean, when you go to that website, what you're going to find is everything I talked about in detail. All the links, all the videos, all the screenshots, and so on. So today, and during this time, I want you to just kind of just follow along. Don't get into the detail or the weeds of things. Don't try to read everything on the screen because you're not going to be able to read it. It's small print, and it's not meant for you to read. It's more for you to just kind of get the idea of what we're talking about. So just as an overview, I've done many psychic stings, and I continue to do more psychic stings. And each one of them has a little um, a memorable way of, of, of um, name and we've done Operation Bumblebee right up here, Operation Ice Cream Cone, Operation Tater Tot, that's uh, the psychic um, Tyler Henry, the one that does the Hollywood Medium and I'm constantly still working with him on his stuff to Operation Pizza Roll which I'm going to be talking about in detail today and Operation Peach Pit, which I will be talking about a little bit in, in today, because those are the kinds, the ones that we've been doing most recently. So we have many different operations, and that's what that's for. So this is Operation Peach Pit, the uh, pizza roll that I'll be talking most about. And I hope you guys don't get all hungry, but you know, I, I, I look at this and I go, mm, ice cream. Okay, so the, the psychic stings that we do, they're not, really not intended to educate the audience. A lot of these stings um, happen over Facebook. And um, that's where the backstory is happening. A lot of the real work is happening on, on Facebook. But when we're in the audience, when we go to and do a sting that's in the moment, I'm just a person who's attending. Or my team is one of the people who are attending. We're not going to stand up and say, you're a phony, you're a phony. Nothing like that. We're going we're to continue through the whole thing to play it all out. And we won't be educating the people in the audience. That's something people are always asking about. We aim this directly at the handlers and the medium themselves. That is who we're trying to get to. I'm not going to be able to necessarily change the minds of the people who've already paid money, who've already bought the books, who are already following the person around. That is very unlikely I'm going to change their mind. So we're trying to get to the handler, handlers and the medium. And there are videos up on my website that I'll give you at the very end of some things that Mark Edward has done with Sylvia Brown and Montel Williams and so on. There's some really terrific videos on there that he's done on his own before him and I started doing these together. Everything we do is fully within the law. Of course, we're going to try to push it as far as we can. Uh, everything is planned in detail beforehand. I do my best the, to record everything we can, create photos, audio, everything we possibly can because it's important to get it back out to you guys to inspire you to want to do things of this sort. It doesn't have to be psychics and grief vampires. It could be the anti-vax movement, GMO, blah, blah. A lot of the topics we use can be used in other areas. And the Wikipedia stuff I do and the grief vampires, vampire stuff I do is some of the things we do. 
Tomorrow you're gonna to be hearing from a woman named Janice Boynton, who's on facilitated communication. And she is one of my Wikipedia editors, and she's also a very good friend. And the facilitated communication project she's gonna be talking about, she's an expert on, but that is something that I'm involved in as well. And so we're involved with a lot of things that have nothing to do with psychics. Um, we try to involve the media and to really release the results. Even if we have bad results, I'm going to release them because I want people to understand what we did wrong. And then we're going to push it as far as we can because I'm a bit of a pushy person, as I've been told. Okay, Operation Pizza Roll. You do not know, need to know who this person is, but I will be talking to him quite a, talking about him a lot. His name is Thomas John Flanagan. I'm going to be calling him TJ the rest of the uh, uh, presentation because it really pisses him off. And so TJ, Thomas John, is a psychic medium who's known as the Manhattan medium. He's also the seatbelt psychic. He had a TV show for one season on Lifetime, and I'll talk about that as well. So Thomas John, I didn't know at all. Thomas John was, just happened to be somebody that appeared on, I think, Paula's Facebook feed as a, as a event that's gonna be happening at the, Holly, uh, the Federal Bar in LA, and Paula said, hey, this guy looks interesting. I think you're going to be coming down to LA, aren't you? And I'm like, yeah, let's do something. So I had done all these other stings in the past, Operation Ice Cream Cone, Operation Bumblebee, Operation uh, Tater Tot. We've done other things in the past. So there had been a little bit of a delay, and I said, all right, let's put together another one. Now, in the meantime, Mark had a connection with a New York Times author, a uh, reporter named Jack Hitt. Mark had done a lecture with him in Connecticut, I think, right? And so Jack Hitt had told Mark at one point, he says, if you ever get a hot read from a psychic, I want to know because I'd like to do a story on that for the New York Times Magazine. I'm like, challenge accepted. That's what you want? I will find a way. Now, Mark talked about cold reading. Do you know what hot reading is? Do we have a general understanding of hot reading? Okay. A couple of people don't. Hot reading is when I know something about you, if I'm the psychic, that there's no way you could have known that I have found out some other way. I have looked at your Facebook feed, your social media. I've talked to your sister who recommended you to come to, this, to the, my psychic event. I have uh, overheard you in the bathroom talking to somebody, or not me, one of my minions, who are as invisible as anybody else, and this happens. Um, we rode up in the elevator together and you were having a conversation about your trip to Hawaii and you didn't realize I was standing, I or one of my people was standing behind you. Um, we actually met in first grade and you don't know that. You know, or there's a, a thousand different ways a hot read can be done and it, coincidences do happen. So as weird as it seems, it happens where people will say, that's my doctor's wife right there. And, um, you know, or whatever. And people will make connections and so the hot read can happen in a zillion different ways. I'm going to show you some of the more common ones but we've heard some amazing ones over the years. So Thomas John, I said challenge accepted, I didn't know anything about him, I'm going to try to go see Thomas John and let's see if we can catch him in a hot read. And it needs to be conclusive. I can't have any of this ambiguous stuff. It's very, very hard to catch somebody in a hot read with proof. I mean, I can't just say my word against his. And we've had that happen as well, too. Things happen and you're like, well, that was a hot read, but how do I prove it? Mm -hmm. You really need proof, especially for the New York Times Magazine. It has to be definitive. And Mark and I were trying to find a way of doing it double-blinded. This is a little complicated. So some of the psychic things I've done in the past, Operation Bumpy, Operation Ice Cream Cone, they were definitely all done in the same pattern that I'm going to explain. And you can read about those on the website. I'm not going to go into detail about them now. So, Facebook users here, or at least you know what Facebook is and how it works, right? Okay. So, one of the methods behind what we're doing is I gathered a team of people together. We're Facebook users. Paula over here in the corner is one of them. And they volunteer. In fact, I think you ran this team. Didn't you run the pizza rollers? You and, and Stuart? I don't know if I ran it, but... Well, okay. So what happens, I gather a group of people, and what they're doing is they're going to make fake Facebook pages. All right? We've had these fake Facebook pages for years. We've used them for <laughs> multiple things. So they have a long history. They have a time, uh, there's a period of time that, you know, they're not recently created uh, accounts. These are old accounts. 
that the people who control these pages, and they're all over the world, these are people from all over the world, Humpty Doo Australia was one of the people who's <laughs> controlling them. One's in New Zealand, one's there, one's there. They run these Wikipedia, uh, Facebook pages as if they are real people. And so when we change characters, and we're gonna go see a different psychic, then they go through, they clean out, like they change the, the person's name, maybe their gender, they change photos, they change, uh, you know, locations now, maybe they're in America, maybe they're, you know, so whatever. So we have these pages that we have running for years. And we borrowed Facebook pages from people too. So people have accounts that they had that they, they wanted to argue with somebody on the internet and they didn't want to use a real name. And they're not doing that now. We'll take their account from them and then we'll use it because it's got a long history. Because that's what we're looking for is a history. So we created a bunch of Facebook pages. And one of them is for Susanna uh, Forsyth Wilson, which is a name that I have an ID for, or I could have an ID for if I needed to show ID at the door. And there's a picture of me that's like years ago, and it's not Googleable. And what the, this, I said, all right team, we're gonna go see Thomas John, TJ, in Hollywood in 10 days. I need Facebook pages for two sitters. One's me and one's Mark. And we're gonna go see the psychic and have at it. So what the pizza rollers did, they called themselves pizza rollers, it's really cute. They named themselves whatever, you know. And so they went into another secret group that Mark and I do not have access to. We don't know what's going on in there. They do have one rule, and that's not to create characters that are us. So like they know I have two adult sons, so they're not gonna create a character that is, has two adult sons necessarily. I had cancer, so they're not gonna create a character who had cancer. They're trying to create people who are, who are not us, but in the same age group, you know, same, same demographics in America and so on. Okay, so have I lost anybody yet? Because this is getting a little confusing. Sorry, but it does get a little confusing. So, they set it up so that Susanna and Mark are going to go see a psychic. And they're having conversations amongst themselves on these fake Facebook pages for days. Talking about work, checking in to Starbucks, uh, talking about different uh, things that happened, they sprained their ankle, I don't know. Just realistic looking things. And they put memes up, cat videos, Deepak Chopra quotes. They don't wanna look like skeptics, but they don't wanna look like some weird, way out there believer, which are a lot of the people who are on those uh, mediums pages. We're trying to mimic them a little bit. Lots of emojis, lots of hearts, lots of angel little wingy things. They, they're trying to mimic them a little bit, mm -hmm. all right? So I said you can't read this because it's just a lot of print. But when you go to the, my uh, website, all these screenshots are there. You can read them in detail. And it has all kinds of content. So these are different people, several people. You're actually here at this conference. I just read, I see, see uh, Greg's name. Um, so they're having conversations and they're talking about how Susanna, which I can't read, remember I cannot read this Facebook page, so I don't know what's on it. Susanna has a twin brother named Andy who died of pancreatic cancer just a few years ago. It was really sad. So a twin. And you know how twins have that common, you know, that, that psychic connection, right? And I've been having trouble sleeping and music, I think, um, I've been hearing music that makes me think of him and I feel like he's trying to connect. Mm -hmm. And one of the other characters says, you know, you should go see a psychic. I, you know, in fact, a friend of mine recommends this guy, TJ. And hey, check it out, he's gonna be near you. <coughs> in Hollywood, I don't live anywhere near LA, by the way. But he's gonna be in Hollywood, or LA, at about this time. And so the Susanna character says, That's, maybe I should do that, that's a pretty good idea. And what they're doing is they're setting up the bait, right? They're, they're creating the backstory. And then over the 10 days, they're creating more and more and Mark is gonna, Mark has heart, Mark is worried he has heart conditions because he's about the age his father was who, who had died of heart problems. So Mark's starting to have tests done. I mean, this all sounds legit, right? Mm -hmm. So they're having conversations with each other about this and then eventually what will happen is right before the event, and I think they even reached out to him on Facebook and just like had a one-on-one -on -one with him uh, over Messenger just saying something about, you know, some question they asked him so that it was just using the Susanna account. So it was just one more opportunity for the psychic to see Susanna's profile, right? 
So it goes on and on and it accumulates up until the day or the days before and then they tag him. I'm going to the Thomas John event and when you tag somebody on Facebook, it's like saying, hey, I'm going to your event. Do you see me? See, I'm going to your event. And sometimes they respond. Well, in this case, um, I think he did respond, but it's just like, look at my profile, look at my profile, look at this phony stories that we've left for you to look at. So here's Susanna is one of the things, and remember my brother died, my poor brother Andy, my twin, he died of pancreatic cancer. So she's sharing things about pancreatic cancer on her Facebook page, pancreatic cancer awareness, pancreatic cancer awareness, and things like about, you know, those kinds of things that you might, you might share. And then... Here's some posts that, here's Mark Wilson over here. Of course, remember, Mark has no access to this. He doesn't know what's on this Facebook page, these Facebook pages. And they have these conversations, and he's talking about heart disease, and there's some pictures that are shown of, of heart disease. And then longer conversations. This goes on for days. When we did Operation Bumblebee, but this went on for six months. So this was 10 days. I'm like, I don't know if we could pull this off, but let's try. So we finally go to the event. Now, uh, Mark and I don't know if he's going to hot read us or if he's going to cold read us or ignore us. We don't know what's going on. But it's a room about the size we're in right now. About, about 50, 80 people in the room. So Mark and I go, pretending to be a married couple with fake wedding rings. Mm -hmm. And um, we go prepared to be cold read. So Mark is wearing, he has nothing to do with the military. So he borrowed a pin, a, a marine pin. And he's wearing it on his jacket. So in case the psychic does a cold read and he sees the pen and he starts talking about the Marines, we know he got it from, from seeing the pen because there's no other way he would have gotten that from, from Mark because there's nothing he has, any contact with the military. I have really no contact with Scotland. I obviously have a na no accent, the Scottish accent, but I wore a Scottish pen. We also dressed up because it's about, they want to get a hook in you. So they're looking for some people who've got some money. So we went and I looked very weepy. We had Kleenexes in our pockets. Mm -hmm. We went in and we bought VIP tickets. And that is so important because when people do these kinds of events, the skeptics in the event do not want to buy the, give them all that money. It's $161 a person. We're sitting in the third row. We're right up here and we get VIP, we get a book. Skeptics, they sit in the back, you know? You ain't gonna get a reading. You don't got no money. No, you gotta be here. The true believers, the people who follow him around, they go from event to event. They got the front row. Because guess what? He needs to be able to call on them when he's in a desperate strait and he'll call on somebody who's been to like four of his events and he knows all about him. So the closest we can get is about where you're sitting right there, right in that area. This little area where these guys are. Okay, so we're right here. Oops. And it was kind of scary because at one point Mark sat down and, and somebody said, you look really familiar, Mark. Uh, you know, looking at him, are you the medium? And Mark said, oh, shit. No, I just look like a lot of people. Mark's been on TV so many times. You guys don't understand. He's done bullshit. Yeah, I couldn't tell the bullshit he's been on. Uh, all kinds of things. You can see his, from his website. He's been on TV multiple times. So I don't think we're going to be using Mark again. Not without a disguise. And I don't think I could be in, in, in this anyway. Either. Okay, let me see. So what happens is Operation Pizza Roll um, is all on my website. I'm not going to show you. No, I, I'll tell you. What happens is a lot of things happen. He gives us a reading. And um, oddly enough, he gets my brother and Mark's dad. And that's fine because Mark and I know enough about enough to raise our hand because we're sitting in the audience and all he does is say i'm getting this and then we say that's me we raise our hand they bring a microphone to you and then he gives you he gives a reading the man stood on their stage like this with the microphone with his eyes closed for almost two hours it was amazing very quiet and still so he could hear so hear from the other world or something so he's going through and he's giving us the readings Mark and I are, cr I'm crying. Mark's taking paper. He's got a paper like this. He's like this, fanning me. Because I'm, I'm overjoyed, but you know, I'm probably turning red. We have tissues and you know, it was great. So there's a lot of things that happened. I don't have a lot of detail time to do it, but it is all detail on my website. I'm, unfortunately, I don't have time for, to explain everything. But we did get readings and I have audio. 
We were able to record the whole thing. I was wired to record. And then the uh, manager got up on stage and she said, hello everybody, it's so nice to see so many familiar faces in the audience. And I'm thinking, oh, hot reads, all of them, huh? You know, familiar faces. That means that their people have been here multiple times. Don't worry about recording, go ahead and record. I'm like, wonderful. So I pull my iPhone out and like make it public that I'm, I'm but I was also wired in another way too, because we were going to record this regardless. So this is TJ. We went to the <laughs> VIP afterwards. We got a nice meet and greet with them. Uh, one of the things that happened was one of the women in the audience who had a perfect reading, we call her the woman in green. Um, we now know her name. But she had a perfect reading from him, and that was odd. Mark nudges me and says, she's not crying. She looks like she's crying, but she's not crying because she's right across the aisle from him. At one point, he wrote a book. This guy, TJ, wrote a book, and he's, they'd handed out copies to everybody in the audience who paid for VIP. She takes the book to give it to him to autograph, and he says, and she looks up at it and says, spell it right this time. <laughs> Nobody noticed that except us. Mark and I are like, <laughs> so uh, it's funny that he asked everybody else their name, but not her. And other things happened, like he called. I asked a question. I said, um, "Have you? Do you know any other mediums? Anybody else that you really respect?" He named a few, and then he said, "And then I have students that are really promising." And I said, "Students? You have students?" He goes, and he went over right to her, put his hand on her shoulder. Yes, I have many promising students. I'm like, oh, the lady you gave a really strong, detailed reading to was one of your students. How nice. Nobody noticed. Okay. There he is on stage. Ah, oh, TJ. And it doesn't seem to be moving, moving, moving. Oh, blah, blah. Okay, here we go. So, I'm going to play some audio. Hopefully this works. We were testing it. It'll work. Yeah. Thank you. Somebody's twin. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, I have to tell you, just as soon as I'm tapping into you, somebody's making me aware of cancer. Is this your brother? Did he have cancer? Yes. Okay. Because he showed me cancer. And I get in here, which to me would show me stomach or pancreas. Do you understand? Yes. Okay. So he's he's stepping forward. Now this feels quite recent to me in terms of he didn't die a long time ago, right? No. Okay, so I that's all I know. His name's Andy, I know that, and that's about it. So anything the psychic says after that, I don't know if he's getting it from my Facebook page or he's cold reading me or, or he's, I don't know what. So I have to agree with everything he says. And you can hear I'm quite emotional. And so um, then here's Mark's part of the reading. So, uh, so your dad passed from heart problems, is that correct? Yes. Okay. Um, I, want to tell, I want to tell you also, I feel, <laughs> Uh, this was not a, a, a recent death, is that correct? With your dad? No. He didn't die recently. No. Um, now, I don't want to scare you, but are, do you, have you had your heart checked? Uh, yes. Okay. Um, you need to stay with that. You need to stay with that. They're telling me, your dad's telling me, <coughs> it's not as bad as you think. But you, you, like, I feel like you're almost obsessing about it, actually. Like, I, I almost feel like you're like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, like one thing was told to you, and now you're like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Yeah. You're, yeah, but your dad is saying, not as bad as you think. I can't but, sleep. Right. Well, that would be because uh, you're obsessing about it. But your, your dad is saying, it's not as bad as you think. Now, you must be going for a test in the next seven days. Is that correct? In the next week? Uh, no, I just had some. Oh, you just had some tests. Yeah. Okay. And have they not told you everything yet? No. Okay, so because I'm seeing in the next that's seven... That's why I came here. Okay, well, that's, well here we go. <laughs> Welcome to the haunted house. Uh, so, um, there's, there's something in the next seven days. There's something in the next seven days that you're going to hear about. And like I said, I see it being kind of mixed. It might be something where it's like, this needs to be changed or that needs to be changed. But it's not going to be like a death sentence or something like you are, 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 are feeling. Now, um, I want to just share with you, um, um, <clears throat> and obviously, you know, medical stuff comes through. I always tell people, it's like, you know, you have to, do, obviously, you go to your doctor and stuff. But they, they know about things and they'll share things. It's usually more like how they're doing it now, like it's an energetic thing. <clears throat> so, like I said, I just feel like um, 
you, you need, you know, it, it, and your dad is showing me it's passed down. So there's definitely, you know, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a passed down thing. Okay, that's the longest clip I have. So that I, I'm going to show you today. But like I said, the whole reading is up on the website. 15 minutes. So then we're done, as far as Mark and I know. We don't know anything else. We know nothing else that's on those Facebook pages. And that was like maybe three minutes in total I just played for you. So we've got, he's got a lot more minutes, 12 more minutes to fill, the psychic does. So he goes on and he talks about, a little bit. But somebody's talking about they were smoker, 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 and they quit. I think it's your brother. Is that true? Did yeah. he smoke and then quit? Did he quit uh, smoking? Yes, your brother. No, 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 your brother, the twin, the twin. Oh, my brother. Oh, oh my brother did too. Yeah, well, the brother is dead. No, but I think it's your brother, your twin. Did he did he quit smoking? Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Okay, so he, he quit smoking. I don't know. I don't know what's on the Facebook page. They didn't tell me what was there. So how am I going to know? We're double blinding it. There's no way. I can know what's on those Facebook pages. So if anything said that is on those Facebook pages, it came from the Facebook pages and the psychic. I don't know. So Mark and I are just, really funny. it was really funny because we're like, you know, like you said, Mark's like, oh, that was my brother. I'm like, oh, well, okay. He's like, no, it's not your brother. It's the twins' brother. I'm like, oh, yes, it's my brother. And Mark's like, well, my brother also. So when after this event's over and we take the, the video, the, the audio to, to the pizza rollers to analyze it and compare it with the, the screenshots, right, that were on the Facebook page. They didn't know what we were talking about. I said, well, who quit smoking? They're like, I don't know. But it, maybe when, what turns out is one of the old profiles. Remember I said these Facebook pages have been around for a while. So somebody in 2013 had put up a quit smoking life event for the person who turned out to be our brother, Andy Forsyth. Because uh -huh. we used the character Andy Forsyth as my brother. My twin, oh, I'm so sad, he died of pancreatic cancer. And then this was on there and they didn't remember putting it there because they didn't, it was from an old account. So somebody saw the Facebook page with that. Okay, here's another really good one. So uh, another thing he asked me about Michigan, I can't remember if I have audio or not on the next screen, and we couldn't figure out Michigan. I just said, yeah, Michigan, um, I had family, I, yeah, I've been, yeah, we, we had we moved around a lot, and yes, I lived in Michigan at one point. So again, we don't know what to say. We don't know what the Facebook page says. We're trying to make it up and figure out what to do. So he had said something about Michigan. Well, we I went back to the Facebook team, the the, the pizza rollers, and said, "What's this about Michigan?" And they don't have a clue. They have no idea. Nobody mentioned Michigan. I personally have never been to Michigan, which was interesting. Mm -hmm. But they figured it out after a while. Somebody put up a filler picture, just a filler, and it said Frenchman's Creek Cornwall. That's in the UK. Mm -hmm. But, I've never heard of it. But if you take and you Google Frenchman's Creek Cornwall, you get a place in Michigan. <laughs> I assume that's where you got Michigan. Uh, Cornwall Creek Flowage in Michigan. I assume that's where he got Michigan from. I don't know. I don't speak to the dead, but maybe maybe she got confused or something. So we think that's what happened. So here's the lady in green over here that that and I I was taking pictures because as I said I'm going to take pictures. I'm going to sneak pictures. And here's a selfie Mark and I took with him afterwards. He must have been really suspicious because Mark and I didn't know what the hell was going on at the time. But it doesn't matter. As soon as he opened his mouth and started talking about a twin brother with pancreatic cancer and Mark has a father with health con conditions and Mark's having tests done, we had him. We didn't know we had a double blind until afterwards. So we can't stand up in the audience and go, you faker, that's our Facebook page. We can't do any of that, right? So we had to go through the whole thing, sit through everything, and we had a nice selfie with him. How so, was that revenue? Hmm? The venue, how many seats? About this room, room, maybe a little bigger than this, maybe 100, maybe 80 to 100 people. So do you think that's his primary source of income, is those things? Or Lots of income, but I'll tell you in a minute. Sales cans. So 
Did he uh, have yeah, the, yeah. Because he figured he had so much on you from these Facebook pages, he didn't bother to do anything about your pins? Exactly. Nothing. Yeah. No cold reading at all. Yeah, why each, do it, huh? Yeah, yeah. each yeah. psychic has their own way of going about things. They have, and I do a lot of research of psychics, like Mark says. I'm at home with the cats. And I have a team of people, and they also do a lot of research. So we do a lot of online stuff. And in my opinion, Thomas John does very little cold reading. He's, he's more of a hot reader. Can I, can I ask you something? Sure. Did he have a thing in his ear that somebody else was dead? Did, did he memorize all that? I do not believe he memorized it. The guy is very scattered, and, and he's not that type. I do not believe he memorized it, and there was a lot of detail. And I am not going to stand on the stage with a recorder on saying that I think he has an earpiece. Because I don't know. We couldn't see anything. But it's possible that they're very small. Yeah. So, Can I say something about that? Good. Uh, one of the things that to me is a giveaway. That, that Keeping in mind so, you're recording it, this. It's so transparent and yet you're not sure is when a medium is on the stage like that and he stands perfectly still and he says, wait a minute, I'm getting something. And he did that several times. Yeah. Perfectly quiet for like 10 seconds. Wait, you know, I'm getting the something. The guy backstage is, you know, there could be, oh could have God. a really uh, deep rooted the earpiece. <laughs> it's like, yes, they're saying, the spirits are saying to me, it's like, wait, from, from what we understand, so from, we don't know for sure. We can right. get in a lot of trouble. We don't want to be sued for that. Yeah. <laughs> Let's just say he has a really good memory. Could, or he could be talking to the dead, and the dead could be reading the <laughs> pages. We don't know. <laughs> but they did happen in order. I believe from, yeah, from the order. They were them from the Facebook. I, it's oh, pretty much in order, order as the Facebook as you scroll down the Facebook. I'll, I'll get you a question. It might come up now. So now what? I go to the New York Times. We got it. We got it. Oh, we got screenshots. We got audio bark. Yeah. Yeah. And Jack hits like, fantastic. Okay, this is great. He goes to his editor who says, I love it. He goes to, talks to people and all other New York Times reporters. They're like, this is great. And a year passes. Mm. A whole year. And I can't say anything because I can't reveal all this, right? So now what? We're like, okay, what the heck? So finally we called him up and said, Jack, what is the problem? He goes, well, the problem is, is that I wasn't there. And, and the New York Times is really, the kind of writer that this Jack Hitt is, is that he wants to give the ambiance and, you know, and talk to people and, and interview the pizza rollers and all that kind of stuff. So he wasn't there. Let me know when you're going to do another one. I, I don't know if I can catch another hot reader. This is really hard. He says, well, I don't really need to catch a hot read. You already got that. I just kind of need to go and, and, and see the sting unfold. How is it organized? Talk to the people who participate. All right. Operation Peach Pit. So we sent a team of people. And Kenny Biddle, who is going to be speaking in a workshop a little later. Two o'clock. At 2 o'clock. Kenny Biddle. We sent him and his wife and four skeptics. Same idea. I think it's Connecticut or Pennsylvania. A different psychic named Matt Frazier, and we sent them and Jack Hitt to a show. Same background, they had extensive uh, Facebook pages made out that they did not know it was on there. We told all six people, we, we had many Skype calls, and Jack Hitt was on all Skype calls. We took the six people and we went through and we said, you, this is your name, and you're married to that person over there, and you, are, had a relationship with this person over here, but you've broken up and now you're kind of hoping you're going to get back together again and you're going to go to this psychic thing and you're kind of hoping. And so they had extensive backstories. We told them just a little bit and that was it. Sent them. We said, play it up. And they did. They're taking pictures and selfies and then they take the selfie. They send it to the team. What were they called, Paula? They were called, um, what was the team called? It wasn't a pizza rollers. It was, um, the well, Laetril. Laetrils. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So the Laetril team, it's a different group of, you know, some people were in there, they're the same people from before and some not. So the Laetril people were, were, would take the picture that they selfie they took at the event and then fed it back up on their Facebook page so the psychic would be able to see they're at the event and what they're wearing, what they look like. And, and Donna Biddle wore this massive bright blue wig. So... <laughs> There they are with, with the psychic. There they are with the psychic. Here's Donna. Here's his kitty. 
Kenny has a camera in recording everything in his glasses. <laughs> and so we have, here's the other skeptics. And so they went and got the book. And again, they don't know if they were hot red or not. They don't know what happened because it's, it's all happening in the moment, but they did not get read. And Kenny wrote an article called Operation Peach Pit. It's on the website, so you can see it. But the, the idea was the site the reporter needed to see. So now he's gone, he's attended everything. He went to Kenny's house before, after, he sat in all the Skype calls, he's there. We got it, all right, he's there. So Jack, get that story out, get that story out. He's writing furiously, he's loving it, he's all, oh, this is great, my editor loves it. Another year goes by. Oh my God. I'm like, what the heck? Okay, back to pizza roll. I can't remember why, I'm turning on this slide. All right, so what ends up happening is we, I have a Wikipedia editing team, you might have heard. We are a massive team of 100 and something people, and I'm always recruiting. If you guys want to join, I will tell you all about it. I will train you. I can train anybody. And it's all happening over face a secret Facebook group called The Secret of Ball. And there is Google Documents that you learn from, and it takes about four months to become one of my editors. But anyway, so we created a, a Wikipedia page for Thomas John because we know eventually a New York Times article is going to come out and we want to be able to put it on the Wikipedia page along with the other articles that I've written, Kenny Biddle's written, and so on. We need a place to put them because we want, the meet, we want people outside the choir to learn about this guy. When they Google his name, they want him to find <coughs> these articles, right? So just putting up a website is not going to have the Google foo that, that a Wikipedia page is. Wikipedia is where people are going to find their information. So we write the Wikipedia page and we sit on it. We can only put what we can put on it, and he is notable enough to have a Wikipedia page. He's got extensive um, citations that we can use. So it's a legitimate page. There's no slander. There's no, um, uh, it's, you know, we're not, we're not using ad hominems. It is a legitimate, really well-written Wikipedia page. Anybody would be proud to have it. Maybe not him, but. Um, so we wrote that waiting for it. We had no picture to put on there because we can't use a photo unless it's uploaded by the photographer. I am a photographer. So, Seatbelt Psychic. He has a TV show. Right? Let's see how I'm doing on time. Okay. So, so Seatbelt Psychic is his TV show. And I said, you know what? I'll write an article. I write for Skeptical Inquirer. So I'll write an article. Let me do some research on his TV show. This is a TV show. Anybody seen this? Or anybody willing to admit that they've seen this? <laughs> it's one year, one season. People get in a car and he ride shares them take like a Lyft or a Uber or something and as they get in the car they get in the back seat with their seatbelt on and then he talks to their dead people right that's the show it's all filmed and people start crying within a couple minutes and that's what it is person after person after person gets in the car and he just drives them around so I said I will evaluate seatbelt so I can, can see what I think he's doing and that way I'll write an article and then it can go on the Wikipedia page that's my idea and I'm so frustrated because the New York Times has given us the runaround. What do you do? You know, I've got all this great research and it's just frustrating. So Seatbelt Psychic, and I'll just briefly mention this again because the article is up on, on my website. I noticed many things. Um, there's many camera angles that whenever you see the show, they have close-ups of people from different angles. Also, um, the people get in the car, sit down, and it shows them from sitting in the car, putting the seatbelt on, driving away from the curb, and going off, and then he asks them how they're having a good day, you know, things like that, and then they say, and then he'll go, I'm also a medium, are you okay with that? Uh, you know, I'd like to give you a reading, are you okay with that? Your father's sitting right next to you. So he'll do these things. And so I thought, how interesting. It's an Uber or a Lyft driver, and I haven't been on a lot of Ubers.